In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a product to your inventory in the iConnect back office. To get started, once you've logged into your iConnect back office, you want to click Catalog, and then click Products and Services in the submenu, and then in that submenu, click Products slash Services. Now this screen is split up into two sections. On our left, we have all of the products within our product catalog. Um, we can filter by first letter, um, we can search up here, or we can just scroll through, continue to view all the products. On the right hand side, the selected products information and details will be shown. So if we click the first product, now on the right hand side we see all the details and information about that product. We're going to go ahead and add a product to our product catalog, to our inventory, and to do that we first click the plus button at the top, add, and then we click product. So now on the right hand side all the details have been emptied out, we have a fresh new product and we're ready to input all the information. Um, at the top we have some basic info like product name. For this product I'm going to call it custom t-shirt. Um, we have a SKU that is generated by the system. Um, you can change this, of course you'll want to change this to whatever the SKU is on the product that you're adding. So we're going to go ahead and just change it to something. Um, and then we've got the product slash service code. This is just a custom product service code, um, another way to identify the product um, in, the register, in the register or in the um, report sections. So it can be anything alphanumeric, so we're going to call it CST01. Now we're moving on to some more detailed information, and we're going to start with price and cost. Um, we're going to skip member price. Member price is if you uh, have memberships set up at your business, if you're the kind of business that um, enrolls customers in memberships, you can create a member price that is only for customers that have a membership at your business. Um, we're not going to do that here, we'll save that for another video, and we'll just deal with basic cost and price. So one of the best ways to set up your cost and price in the iConnect system is to first uh, set up your cost, um, because you can base your price off of the cost by either markup percentage or margin. So we're going to say that this t-shirt is $10 at cost, and right now, of course, it's telling us our markup percentage is minus 100% because we have zero price. But what we can do is we can actually ask for a certain markup percentage, and the system will calculate the price based on that markup percentage. And it'll also calculate the uh, profit margin. So let's say we want a 200% markup percentage. So our shirt is going to be $30. And our margin, if we click there, is going to be 67%. Um, it's also important to note that we're selling this by each because it's a t-shirt, but this drop-down will allow you to set the quantity, uh, set how the product is sold quantity-wise. So are we selling each or are we selling it in bulk by a certain weight? So in this case, uh, we want to do each, but you could change to sell it by the ounce, by the pound, by the gallon, um, or if you have your system set up to do metric, these would be, um, these would change accordingly to um, different measurements. But in this case, we're just going to sell by each. So we've got a price of 30, a cost of 10, a markup percentage is 200%, and our margin is 67%. So that's great. Um, stock quantity is obviously just going to be how many you have in stock. So let's say we've got 100 of these t-shirts. Minimum and maximum reorder points are great uh, for allowing the system to notify you when your stock is getting low. So let's say we want to be notified if this t-shirt reaches 10 or below um, in stock. What that will do is the system will notify you that this product is low, and then max reorder point basically determines, how, it specifies how many you'd like to have in stock at any given moment, or you know your max that you want in stock so you don't overfill your warehouse. Um, what this does is there is a purchase order feature. We, we do purchase orders, um, and when you go to do a purchase order of this product, if it's you know reached below 10, the system will automatically fill in how many you need to order to get back up to your maximum reorder point. You obviously you can order more if you want, but the system will automate uh, automate it for you. So if you let's say we do want our max reorder point to be 100, so if we're down to two, when we go into a, do a purchase order and we select this product, the system will automatically put 98 in to get us back up to 100, and we can change that to 100 maybe, or we want to order a few more this time, so we do 120, etc. 
category um, is just which category do you want your uh, product to be in. Um, so I think we created in this uh, something called custom category in another video. So we're going to put it under custom category. Um, you can add a category from here if you'd like. If you don't, you know, if you haven't yet added the category to the system, you can do that here. Um, make it easy so you don't have to go back to the other screen. And we also have vendor. So we're going to say, let's say Amazon is the vendor just for whatever. Um, but you can choose your vendor. And again, if you haven't added a vendor in the vendor section yet, you can add it here and it'll automatically add it, uh, add this product to that vendor. Tax category, we've done, we have another video about tax um, where it shows you how to set up your taxes. But what you want to do is choose the tax category that applies to this product. So let's say it's probably sales tax. And then locations. So by default, it's going to be retail store because right now we are logged into the retail store. But if we are a multi-location business, which this account is, we can add it to mul we can add this uh, product to multiple locations. Meaning that an employee who is working logged in at those locations can also sell this product. Now the stock quantity is going to be shared amongst the the various locations selected. So let's say we want to allow the shoe store to sell this T-shirt as well as the retail store. Well, now when the if the shoe store sells a T-shirt, it's going to subtract from this quantity. If a retail store sell, sells this t-shirt, it's going to subtract from this quantity automatically and everything is going to sync up. Um, if you don't add it to a location, that location does not, employees at that location do not have the ability to sell that product at the register. Allow price override simply will allow any employee, regardless of the permissions they're given, to override the price of this item. Most of the time, you're probably going to want to keep this off so that employees aren't changing the prices at will. But there may be certain products, or you know, you may have an, uh, your employee, you trust your employees to change the product's price if they need to for whatever reason. You can turn that on. And then here, down here, we have some more um, membership uh, options. So this is not a, a membership product. A membership product would mean the actual membership that you are selling to your customer. Um, if you, if this product was going to be um, the membership itself that you were going to sell to your customer, you'd want to choose membership. And if it's a rental product, so we do allow for rental products. Um, and what rental products are is, you know, if you have a gym, say, and you rent out um, gym equipment, you can uh, add the product. You can specify that this product will be a rental and it needs to be returned and it has a um, it has a late fee, etc. But we're going to say none for for now. And then pay by membership. Finally, is if your customer is a membership, uh, is is a member of your business, um, they may have some credit because of that membership. You may give them a hundred or two hundred dollars a month to spend at the location. Say if you're a spa, you have a membership, and uh, your customer is a member. It allows your uh, your cust you give your customer maybe $100 worth of products a month that's part of the membership package. Um, you, can deter you can decide or specify if this specific product is included in the line of products that can be purchased with that membership credit. We're going to say off because, again, we're not dealing with memberships in this retail store. Once we're finished with all this, we kind of check it over, make sure it's okay. Simply click Save, and all of the information will be saved. And in future videos, we will go over the matrix and the more information. But for now, you know an, as much as you need to know to add a product and all the basic information to your iConnect account through the back office.